<laughs> We're going to begin with the news, and that is the long-awaited verdict in the murder trial of disgraced attorney Alec Murdaugh. When the jury finally got the case just yesterday, it did not take long for him to be found guilty on all counts, including the murder of his wife and son in June of 2021. Nikki Batiste has been following this trial since it began, and she is once again at the courthouse in Walterboro, South Carolina, where Murdaugh uh, is going to learn his fate in just a few hours this morning. Nikki, good morning. What's the atmosphere like there? Tony, good morning. Well, I think it's still a lot of shock at how quickly the jurors came to this verdict. And Alec Murdahl will be back in court this morning for his sentencing. He faces 30 years to life in prison. The guilty verdict came after a juror was dismissed for discussing the case with at least three people. As a result, an alternate was subbed to help decide Murdahl's fate in a dramatic finish to this gripping case. Guilty verdict. Verdict guilty. Verdict guilty. Signed by the four person. Jurors came to a decision in less than three hours Thursday, finding Alec Murdahl guilty of killing his wife Maggie and son Paul, in addition to two counts of possessing a weapon during the commission of a violent crime. We would make a motion for a mistrial. Murdahl's defense attorneys asked to overturn the verdict, a move Judge Clifton Newman rejected. The evidence of guilt is overwhelming, and uh, I deny the motion. Murdahl appeared stone-faced as he was escorted from the courtroom in handcuffs, pausing to look at his surviving son, Buster, who appeared to have no reaction. Moments earlier, Buster seemed to hold back tears as each juror confirmed their decision. Our criminal justice system worked tonight. It gave a voice to Maggie and Paul Murdoch. Following the verdict, prosecutors shared their reaction. It doesn't matter who your family is, how prominent you are. If you do wrong, if you break the law, if you murder, then justice will be done in South Carolina. Earlier in the day, the defense presented its closing arguments, dismissing the state's claim that Murdahl killed his wife and son to gain sympathy before decades of alleged financial crimes came to light. Totally illogical, irrational, and insane. Those are words I wrote down. For someone to kill their loved ones when their criminal conduct is being exposed. In their rebuttal, prosecutors reiterated that Murdahl had admitted to a pattern of lying in his testimony, in particular about being at the crime scene minutes before the murders took place. You don't lie about that. That's not a mistake. That's not a mistake. Jurors agreed, unanimously finding Murdahl guilty nearly two years after Maggie and Paul were found dead. We can't bring him back, but we can bring him justice. In remarks after the verdict, the judge told the jurors he applauded their decision. Before Murdahl is sentenced today, we will likely hear victim impact statements. The defense could appeal the guilty verdict, but even if they were successful, Murdahl could still face life in prison for his alleged financial crimes, some of which he admitted to during this trial. Gail? Nikki Batiste, who has been on the case from the very beginning. Great job. Thank you, Nikki. Thank you very much.